Hi, my name is Dr. Jason Scott, and I'm the director of the Joint Preservation Center, Peninsula Orthopedics in Salisbury, Maryland. And I'm excited to uh, present the Quad Pro Tendon Harvester, which is an update on our current quad harvest technique, and show how we can integrate both a soft tissue or a bone quad tendon graft using the same device additionally using our fixation with the fiber tag tightrope. So uh, as we know in the first generation of the um, quad harvester, it required careful dissection, even with a small incision, it required careful dissection and removal of a lot of the soft tissue that was an impediment to the tendon stripper. It was very difficult as we worked proximally into the thigh uh, to get um, um, our tendon released enough to finally cut at the length that we wanted. And so the uh, team at Arthrex has been hard at work designing a one-step harvester stripper, which is giving us an opportunity to choose a graft between eight millimeters, nine millimeters, 10 millimeters, or 11 millimeters. So we have a circumferential soft tissue or bone quad tendon graft uh, that is a lot easier and more accurate to harvest. So that's what we're seeing here on the table. Um, the first is the insert uh, to the handle of the quad tendon harvester. And as we're going to build this, uh, here we have a size 11. You'll notice that the harvester uh, tube itself has uh, graduated numbers that start with 50 millimeters, uh, 60, 70, all the way up to 90 uh, if you can find a, a graph that long. The second is a uh, harvesting window that allows you to um, visualize the harvesting uh, stripper as it's going up through the tendon. And then ultimately, the push rod will um, integrate into the, the harvester and allow us to do our final uh, cut um, once we've reached our desired length. And we're going to demonstrate that uh, in the cadaver specimen shortly. Once we have our graft, uh, we are going to prepare it with uh, fiber tag tight ropes on both the bone patella side as well as the quad tendon harvest side. And you'll see the uh, fiber tag tight rope here. The fiber tag tightrope has become very utilitarian for all knee surgery. This is a real world situation of what it looks like if I'm um, getting ready to uh, harvest a, a quad graft. There's two different types of quad grafts that I'm gonna consider. One is gonna be bone quad tendon, or I refer to that as BQT. The other is just gonna be all soft tissue. When I do a bone quad tendon, I'm gonna do a vertical incision that's gonna incorporate part of the superior pole of the patella and about 1.5 centimeters of the uh, distal quad tendon. That enables me to get to the superior pole of the patella with a mobile window so I can safely harvest a bone plug, yet also get access to the quadriceps tendon for the harvest. If I'm doing a soft tissue only, I will hide my transverse incision in Langer's lines proximal to the uh, superior pole of the patella. Being a little bit proximal allows me to get the proper angle with my cutting guide as I'm going up the proximal femur. If you are too close to the patella with your incision, you sort of have to work yourself around it and drop your hand and sometimes can actually hit the superior pole of the patella. So I always cheat my transverse soft tissue incision about one centimeter proximal to the superior pole of the patella. I also always like to mark out my VMO and then the uh, border of the vastus lateralis. And you can palpate this quite readily and feel that this is where our quadriceps tendon is running. Once we're intra-op and I'm getting ready to actually uh, harvest my quad, I will always make a mark around the uh, 70 millimeter mark. What that does is two things. Number one, it gives me a topographic reminder of where I am so I don't go too far. And number two, it gives me an aiming point so that when I'm looking at my tendon, my your tendency looking at a leg would be to go straight up this way. But the quad tendon fibers are actually going this way. So this is another visual cue to my staff and myself of where I need to aim when I'm doing my quadriceps tendon harvest, whether I'm doing bone quad tendon or soft tissue alone. Now we have harvested our uh, nine by 20 millimeter bone plug off the superior pole of the patella in the traditional fashion. In order to get the sutures that I have now put through the bone plug of the patella up into the graft harvester, we are gonna use a suture passing wire. I will now begin harvesting the quadriceps tendon graft using the Quad Pro Harvester moving from distal to proximal. As I'm moving proximal in the quadriceps tendon, large rotational movements will facilitate cutting the quad tendon as we release it proximally. 
As you can see, we have maximized our tendon length here with an approximately 75 millimeter length. Once I have correlated graph length with my proposed length based off of the patient's height, I will now amputate the graft to complete our graft harvest. After I have reached my desired length for my graft harvest, I'll back the graft harvesting tube so I can visualize the window. The sutures will now be grabbed and brought out. Now that I have retrieved my traction sutures, I will deliver the graft through the harvesting window and lay it on top of the tube. Since there are no sharp edges, I am not worried about cutting my graft prematurely. The graft now is laying on top of the graft harvesting window. We'll insert the push rod to facilitate final amputation of the graft. There are a couple important checks to make right now before we amputate the graft. The first is making sure you have adequate tension on your traction suture. The second step is ensuring that your graft length laying on top is still the desired length that you chose during preparation. Keep tension on your traction sutures and using a motion as if you're injecting a syringe, amputate the graft. Graft harvest is complete. As you can see, we have our desired graft length, our bone block. One of the unique and exciting facets of having quadriceps tendon as our graft choice is just how much collagen we get. The advantage of having this thick of a tendon means we get complete fill of our sockets during ACL reconstruction. Using the fiber tag tightrope implant allows us to get tapered and tight so we do not have to sacrifice any thickness of our graft. I'm often asked whether or not the defect after quadriceps tendon harvest needs to be closed. It definitely helps with fluid management to close the defect while the graft is being prepared. If it is only a partial thickness defect and I do not have a lot of water leaking out of the knee, I leave it open. However, if I harvested a full thickness quad graft, I will close the defect with a running number one vicral suture. One advantage of the Quad Pro Tendon Harvester is we can accurately and consistently take partial thickness quadriceps tendon grafts which minimizes breaching the suprapatella pouch and maximizes fluid efficiency during the reconstructive portion of the procedure. As you can see with this arthroscopic image, we have left the peritenon intact, which protects the remnant quadriceps tendon and facilitates tendon healing. The fiber tag tightrope graft preparation is well documented in previous videos for the soft tissue portion. Today, we're gonna to demonstrate it for preparing the bone portion of a uh, ACL plug. The bone plug could be quadriceps tendon, or you can apply this to bone patellar tendon bone as well. Using a small diameter K wire, two drill holes will be drilled through our bone plug. Next, we will lay our fiber tag over the bone plug and place our first pass just outside our bone portion. Similar to a soft tissue preparation for the fiber tag tightrope, we uh, employed the same technique, but we used two drill holes through the bone plug with a small caliber K wire. The bone portion is on the undersurface of this graft. The fiber tag tightrope portion was laid over the soft tissue. We went then down with our needle. We went up through the first drill hole, through our tightrope, and down through the second drill hole. Now we will tie to complete our graft preparation. Once we have tied to complete our graft fixation, we will cut one limb. I have retained the needle and we will bury our knot. We've now completed our bony portion and now we'll work on our soft tissue portion. The knee has been prepared for ACL reconstruction by doing a limited notch plasty. We've created our femoral and our tibial sockets and our fiber stick and our tiger stick has been passed. During graft preparation, we use the compression tubes. What the graft compression tubes enable us to do is take a lot of collagen and compress it. Oftentimes, I'll take 
an 11.5 or an 11 and be able to compress that soft tissue graft serially down so that the original 11.5 can be compressed to a 9.5 or a 10. What that enables us to do, especially with the soft tissue component of the graft, is do line to line with the smaller size, knowing that when the graft begins to expand during the biologic healing process, we have more compression and filling of our socket. This minimizes effluence of synovial fluid into the socket and minimizes any evidence of uh, tunnel widening. And here is the graft as it comes out of the graft compression tube. We are now ready to put the graft in the knee. The graft is now passed uh, through the uh, femoral socket and the sutures are retrieved. Then we have predetermined our length of our femoral tunnel and we've made a mark on our tightrope so that we can flip our button accurately. Here comes the button. After I pass the tightrope button on the femoral side, I always put the arthroscope in to look at the IT band to ensure that the button is deep to the IT band as you can see in this specimen. This confirms that our button is up against cortical bone and not soft tissue. We are passing the bone plug from the femoral side up into the knee. As the graft is nearing the femoral tunnel to ensure that we still are able to manipulate it what I'll often do is take a probe through the same portal and push down on the bone plug while my assistant is pulling up on the uh, tightrope to get it into the socket. Now that our femoral bone plug is in the femoral socket, we'll pass the tibial end of the graft. The graft is now placed into the tibial socket. Final tensioning is in full extension neutral rotation. And final fixation occurs by putting our ABS button on the proximal tibia and tying our tightrope sutures. The internal brace can be separately fixed with a leg in hyperextension neutral rotation through a swivel lock anchor. Even though my final graft tensioning occurs in full extension, I do put the tibial button in 90 degrees of flexion for provisional tensioning of the graft. What this does is minimizes any graft creep while I'm bringing the knee from flexion to extension. I then bring the leg into full extension and do my final tensioning. The blue graft tensioning handles are vital to get accurate graft tensioning. As we've all learned over the years, excessive pressure of suture through our gloves can cause small cuts. This can lead to less than optimal tensioning of the graft because it actually just simply hurts. Using the graft tensioning handles allows us to get optimal graft tension and minimizes injury to the surgeon's hands. Final graft tensioning is confirmed with arthroscopic evaluation. It should be noted that once I do my first tensioning, I then cycle the knee 50 times. I then retension off the femoral side and tie that. I then retension off the tibial side and I tie that. That attempts to remove any creep that may be in the graft system or in our fixation.